Got a new desk. I'm very excited about it. This is the first desk I've ever bought in my life. I've always found them in alleys. I'm happy. I've got the standing thing. I've got my treadmill. I'm very cool. I'm not on the treadmill right now, but what I want to talk with you about is manometers. So manometers are pressure gauges. They are digital pressure gauges. I came into this in 2008, right at the tail end of when people were still using magnahelic gauges, which are like big round discs with a needle in it that shows what the pressure is. We really don't use those anymore, especially in home performance work because they're just not accurate enough. So this is an entry point to this whole conversation. This is the RetroTech Solo. This is a single channel pressure gauge. I'm gonna say manometer from now on, so just say manometer. This is what we have had up to this point, uh, which is pretty brand new. This is only a year old as well. This is the TEC DG8. I'm gonna show you both of these. These are super cool because normal people are now able to do really high quality pressure measurements in their own homes, just in case you don't have a local HVAC pro who can do this kind of very specialized work. And by the way, I do have a list of scientific HVAC pros on the Home Diagnosis Television website. I'm linking that on screen right now. If you are an HVAC pro, and you want to be on that list, please join. And if you're looking for someone in your area, go check there because that's the easiest place for people to list themselves for free, for you to find them for free. I don't want to have anything to do with any of that relationship. It's between you and them. It's honor system. So this is a very small manometer. We'll take a look at it in just a moment here, but you take the manometer case out of here. You've got pressure hoses. This is a pressure hose. This is a pressure hose. This is the charging cable, the USB charging cable. You also have the option to get this very cool little, very slender uh, pipette that you can use so that you don't crush a hose. And we're not worried about permanent damage to these hoses. What we're worried about is you getting a really terrible reading. Normally what it looks like when you get a crimped hose is the numbers go up and up and up. This is the single channel TEC and this is the single channel RetroTech. Uh, they're roughly the same size. What I like about both of them is that they have magnets on the back. What I like about the Solo is that it has a shirt clip on it. So I can wear this on my belt or on my shirt without having anything extra. This one does not do that. It does have the little case which comes with a belt, you know, loop on the back. But I know this looks dumb. I swear to God, anybody who goes into a home wearing the uniform of a home performance professional, which means this is the stethoscope around your neck. Don't wear it here. This does look dumb, just to be clear. But I now am a different person. I'm not a normal contractor. You've never had anybody like me in your house before. So look for things like this. Infrared camera dangling around the neck on a lanyard. Things like that. To be able to, to whip this out really quickly is important. Now, both of these are going to be very quick responding, and we'll see when you start it up what is required. They are very simple devices. They do not have a big brain in them, um, which is good because you don't need to do that much stuff with these. This one has a brain that can link, be linked uh, through your phone when you get the app, and that then becomes the brain for this. So start up. These are very simple devices. We'll leave that one to the side because I've, I've shown you this in use before on this channel. Now, the reason that we do not use something even like this, which is a Testo manometer, this Testo is a high performance um, test tool company, but this manometer is not a high performance manometer. We would not use this for home performance pressures because this one is uh, like most of the ones that you'd see at an HVAC supply house, field piece, yellow jacket, etc., is going to be set up mostly for measurement of inches of water column. This one is set up for Pascals, PA. That's what we use because there's 250, 249 technically, Pascals in each inch of water column. And this one has a resolution down to 0.01 inches of water column. That's two and a half Pascals is the lowest resolution. That's the finest reading you can get is in two and a half Pascal increments. And the error percentage on this type of an instrument is going to be at least a couple of percent. So you're looking at something like, oh, I can get within seven and a half Pascals, you know, reliably. That's not, we don't, this is not for home performance. What we want to know is really small gradations of within like a Pascal. Um, three Pascals would be kind of like a meaningful measurement when we're talking about room 
pressures. This thing, by the way, is $400. This one is $250. This is not a huge difference. The $400 version doesn't come with a lot of little bells and whistles and extra stuff like this little pipette, which by the way, you don't need this. You could just simply go to Ace Hardware and get like a little copper pipette there for, you know, a couple bucks that will fit into the end of this. It won't be quite as like, this is very slick. It's got the little quick release thing at the end and uh, it's got the little sticker on it and it's sexy. This is sexy, I'm not gonna argue, but you don't need this. So if you wanna be able to get readings without crushing your, your hose, you can do that. $600, $1,500. This is the DM32X. Uh, this is the old DM32. And I love this. This one is my, my special uh, trainer see-through model. The reason that you would pick one over the other is that the single channel manometer is gonna give you a comparison of two things. It's the pressure in something with reference to something else. There's no such thing really as a one point pressure measurement. Normally what they're doing when they do that is having like a little locked chamber that gives you a gauge pressure. You don't know what that pressure is. So you can measure multiple things against that pressure, but it's not zero, it's something inside that gauge. So really we wanna to do to be able to move that anchor around and see what it is with reference to other things. That That is this, one channel, two, little points that you can see here that you can monitor the pressure. This one has four of those little points. And this one is a two channel manometer. Now a blower door test is not possible to run with just one manometer. That's not entirely true. If you're a real rock star, you could figure it out how to do it with, with one of these. In fact, I've done that with one of my mastermind students. Um, and if you wanna check out the mastermind course, that's, I'm linking that on screen right now. But this one enables you to do pressure and airflow at the same time, which is what a blower door test is. It's a measure of airflow at a certain pressure. Duct tightness testing also, an airflow at a set pressure. So you can't do those really complicated dynamic tests with this. This is just kind of seeing what's happening when you have something else that's inducing dynamics in the house. So let's go ahead and fire these up and see what they do. There's only one button uh, for real on this. It's got a little menu button that just changes the, the settings here. So, and boom, we're up and running. That took about one second. Uh, this guy is still, you see the blue light is on there, but it's still thinking. It hasn't really woken up yet. There was a really funny video that Sam Myers did with one of these DM32 models and actually running it through a blower door test, starting it up, baselining it, running it through a blower door test next to one of the TEC DG1000s. And the DG1000 did what this thing is doing right now, which is like, takes a little while to boot up. And I think RetroTech has figured out that it is because when you put a giant brain inside of one of these things, this is basically a phone. I mean, it's, it's heavier than this one for sure too. Uh, and you have all of this resolution and everything with the screen you load a bunch of training videos into this, is it gonna take a little while. So this one is still starting up. I will let you know when we finally get there. Um, in the meantime, you can see that this solo changes if you uh, move it from vertical orientation to sideways orientation, it moves the reading. We can change from pascals. The resolution is a 10th of a pascal. So 1.1 pascal is what you're, you'd get. On inches of water column, you've got thousandths. So tenths, hundredths, thousands, excuse me, 10 thousandths place. So the resolution is 0 0.0001 uh, inches of water column. Pounds per square feet, uh, millibar, which is a barometric pressure. So we're not gonna use that either. And then PSI, and also very, very big. We're not worried about that um, in home performance for the most part. So we're gonna stick mostly in my work. I stick with Pascals almost all the time. HVAC testing, I would be doing this in inches of water column because that's easiest to translate. Still starting up over here, by the way. This is a great tool. Okay, there we go. Their DM232X is awesome. And you will see me use that in other videos on this channel. But um, as you can see, it's a very powerful tool and needs a fair amount of time to boot up. A couple of basics about manometers. And I say this in various videos on this channel. The name of the test almost always tells you what is on the input side. And when you look at the bottom of this, you've got red and blue. Blue says plus, red says minus. That's an old fashioned way of talking about this. You don't have to hook up 
the negative pressure to the positive side, nor do you have to hook up the blue hose to the blue thing. These co color coding doesn't matter so much, especially on this one channel. When you're trying to do something complicated like blower door testing, then it is useful. The name of the test tells you what goes on the input tap. The input tap being, in this case, the plus side. So if I put this here and then I induce a pressure on the end of this hose by just putting my thumb over it, you can see I've got a number here. And that number is 130-ish pascals. That's the plus side. If I was to take this same hose and put it on the negative side and then press on it, you can see I get a negative pressure. And so that's the difference there really is you're trying to figure out the pressure in something with reference to something else. The pressure in the room with reference to this is a negative pressure. When I put it this here, the pressure in the hose with reference to the room, which is open, is a positive pressure. Now with a one channel manometer, there's no way of testing whether I have a hole in my hose because you can't measure the pressure in something with reference to the same thing it'll always show zero. So we can't do that double check. That's something that you would need a, a dual channel manometer for. But we can do with this is zonal pressure testing under HVAC motivated pressures. I've got a video for that. Zonal pressure testing during a blower door test, which is something that almost any blower door professional should be able to do. And by the way, having a second manometer, a second $400 manometer to be able to do that with so you don't have to buy another $1,500 model is useful because then you can keep the blower door in cruise control. If you don't have a second manometer, you can't keep it in cruise control and it won't lock in and constantly maintain that 50 pascals. So this is all a little, we're getting nerdy and into the weeds here, but let me just say that if you want to get certified in how to do blower door testing, I do have a one day course for that. It's online self-paced. It includes an hour coaching with me. If you're looking for a small, easy manometer that you can get a hold of, and hopefully this goes for international uh, audience as well. If you're in Canada, I hope that you're able to get a hold of this. 400 bucks, I think is great for this. Uh, just a reminder, you do have a choice. This one is $600. This is the DJ8 from TEC. Um, both great tools. This one, by the way, just as a, a quick reminder, I did say this in one of the trade shows. It's got a little USB-C port up here. And so they're able to update the firmware. So they're thinking that they're, they are going to do more stuff with this later, but we're going to uh, we're in the beginning phases. This thing just rolled out. Make sure that you're testing things, get your measurements, use science to analyze what's going on in any home before you start making decisions and doing surgery. Comment below if you have anything else to add about pressure gauges in general. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.